In part one, we went over spreading this all out and uh, how we labeled everything, as well as going through all the documentation that I've collected. Uh, and if you haven't seen that video, I, I, I highly recommend you start there. I'm going to put a link at the top where you can get to that. But uh, today, we're going to start eliminating a lot of these wires. And, uh, and to do that, we're actually going to come over to this fuse block area, and we're going to start right here. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this fuse block and uh, go ahead and disconnect the PCM. All right, there's our blue, and there's our red. This little block right here is called the C2, and this is what went to the fuse block. We're going to put that to the side for a second. These three here basically go to other harnesses in the car. They either send or receive data from different areas, like the rear end and the transmission and that type of stuff. These are like communication type things. We don't need any. My new vehicle, and anytime you're going to do a swap, your vehicle is not going to have the other end of this connection, so these are kind of useless. In fact, all of these wires are going to be deleted except for th about three or four of them that's on this larger connector. This is called the C100 connector. This is the C152 and this is C153. I'm going to cut all these off the back. Those three or four wires that are on here, I'm going to find them basically coming off the pinouts of my uh, PCM connector. So I don't need to keep track of that. We're just going to cut these off. This is that C2 block that goes to the fuse block, and we're going to cut off all the wires that are not pink or orange. Uh, those are cake wires we're not going to use, so let's just get rid of those first, and then we'll talk about the rest. Okay, so I took off some black tape that was in here, gave me a little more room. I was able to pull all those non-pink and orange wires to the side and got them zip tied, just, just loosely, just out of the way. And let's talk about what this is. So what we have left is our orange wires and our pink wires. The orange wires are basically 12 volts positive coming from the battery. These are not switched. Whether the key's in ignition or not, these have 12 volts positive on them. These are 12 volts positive, but they only have a current or positive voltage on them if you have the key in ignition and have it turned to that first position. That's when these turn on. That's that what turns on all the, all the pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these off, these two off, and uh, label them as battery positive. And then we, some of these pinks we're going to need and some of these we're not going to need. And since they're already organized on this block, I can tell what they are. I'm going to cut them off and label them as I go. Uh, that's going to help me keep it organized. That way I don't have to to chase them down the harness and just so you know this C block C2 block is actually uh, organized in rows and columns um, we have rows that are A B C D E and F this very smallly uh, written fine with fine print on the side and then columns of um, 1 through 12 and so I can use that chart that I got off lt1swap.com to identify which ones come to which so let's get let's get these cut off first and labeled. Okay, there's my battery positive. And then um, we're going to start going down through the list to get these uh, cut off and labeled. So if I look down my list, the very first pink wire that I'm interested in is in location C4, and it is the ignition voltage for the mass airflow sensor. So if I go A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, 4, there's this pink wire right there, is for my MAF. So I'm going to cut that off, bring it over here, label that.
label that math. So that one's done. And the next one is C10, injectors one and three. So C10, C1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's this. And in that one, there's actually two wires. So they're together, and I'm going to keep them together anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those off. And just keep them together. And this is one, three. All right, it says injector one, three. I'm going to keep doing this till I get all the way down. And in a minute, I'll have a few of these pink wires left over and I'll bring you back then. Okay, so now I've got these remaining pink wires. These go to sensors that require power, uh, but those sensors will be will be disabled so and be taken out. So I'm going to cut these off, and these basically just kind of belong to this group here. All right, now we got a mess. Next, I'm going to take off all this loom this direction and this loom all the way at least to this first joint. Um, and then we're going to actually focus on the PCM connectors and start depinning all the wires we don't need. We need to get those out of there. Let's do that next. So it took a little while to get all that loom and, and uh, tape off, but it came off pretty cleanly and uh, not a lot of dirty stuff like that in there. So I separated these two. This goes like that. I, I labeled the red one only and I labeled it so when I put it back together, you won't, actually won't be able to see the red. But what we gotta do now is get this gray cover off and these red covers off and, and the same thing with this side. And there's a piece here, it just, I think you just pinch it and it lifts up, same thing with this side. Okay, I actually got a zip tie here kind of holding this together, so I gotta nip that off. Okay, so take your time on that because you don't want to break off these little tabs. The thing won't go back on, right? They squeeze in and then they pull out. Uh, there's two on the two on each end, and then there's these two here that are a little bit oblong. So um, I'm going to get this other side off since I now know how to do that. Let's see, this one's not connected anywhere else. Alright, that gives us access to the back of these, and there's numbers on here. We'll go back to that blue and red chart, and we're going to look at these numbers, and there's some of these wires that we're actually going to deep in and pull those wires out, and those are going to be pulled out of the whole thing. Now let's work on getting these, these covers off. These, 
on the end there's a you push this little button in and pull that out Those come out pretty easy. All right, the next thing we want to do, we want to start cleaning up these connectors to our PCM. I'm going to start with the blue one, and ultimately, what we're going to do is we're going to deep, we're going to lift up this little tab, push out these pins, pull them out the back side, put it off to the side. That whole wire and pin is going to be removed for the entire harness. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our blue wiring chart uh, from LT1Swap.com. And uh, if I look at that, I can see that the first wire I need to remove is blue 13. Well, when I turn this thing over and look at it, 13 is right here, and there's not even a wire in it. So I, I can just disregard that. The next wire that I need to remove is blue 14, 15, 16. All those are empty. Uh, 17 and 18. Those both need to be removed and I've confirmed that 16 is uh, 17 is this dark blue wire and 18 is this red wire so these two need to be removed so I'm gonna flip over that's basically I'm gonna just say it's it's three and four from this end on the bottom what will be the bottom here so it's these bottom two wires right there need to be removed I think you can just you can either use your fingernail or a screwdriver well Pull that out a little bit and push that wire. And pull the blue one out. Okay, there's the blue, there's set 17. And then 18 is this one. That's the red one on the back side and pull the red one out now okay so those two wires are going to get removed from this harness let's work them out a little bit all right so i'm just going to continue down that blue chart find each of these the pin numbers and deep in it just like that and get this all cleaned up okay that didn't take very long um, I got all those deep pinned and so here are all the wires that are gonna these go to sensors and so I'll, these will get pulled out and uh, completely gone now on this blue one uh, two things more things have to happen before I can kind of button this back up and put it back together number one on pin 42 I've got to actually add a wire back into pin 42 that's going to control my electric fan and I'll end up using just using one of these and I'll end up just putting this right back in there what I'm going to do and I wish I had noted which one came out of like the O2 rear sensor because that's going to be a really long wire and that's what I kind of need so I'm going to wait till I get it all pulled out and then I'm just going to insert that one back in um, and we'll get that put that way the other thing that has to happen is now that we've opened up you know any of these ports that aren't used they've got a, a little plug in them right I need to go back and put and I think I'm going to use just a, a, a hot glue gun and a, basically fill all the holes where I pulled pins out of just so moisture doesn't get in through here and get into the computer so um, that does it for pin number two that took about you know 15 minutes or so and you know it's depending and then kind of getting it out to at least to this point um, so I'm gonna push this off to the side and I'm gonna do the same thing for my red connector alright so the red connector is now done here are all the wires and pins that are being pulled out of that the only thing here, there was one wire listed as add on pin 33. There's already a wire on 33, so and what that is is for a secondary fan, your cooling fan. And right now, the, I know I only have one fan, but if I wanted to take that out and put in a two fan system, I'm going to go ahead and, and leave this wire in here so I don't have to do it again later. 
So this is pin 33. I went ahead and went up here and, and labeled this as red 33. So I'll, I'll follow that out to where it goes and um, just that'll be my extension for that piece. So this one's done except for I'm going to need to use some um, probably some hot glue to fill in those holes and then we'll get this kind of bundled back together. This is a quick look at my blue and red connector pinout charts. You can see in the red X's where I went ahead and highlighted all the pins that I wanted to remove. This made it a lot easier to actually do the removal, as well as this is going to be a good reference to keep. Here's a look at the C2 fuse block connector. The orange ones were pretty apparent, but uh, the pink ones, this is how I determined which of the pink wires I wanted to clip off and label. And for those remote harness connectors, here's a look at those few wires that I'm going to keep. Okay, since these wires are all coming out, I'm going to go ahead and fish these all the way out till they get to that junction way over there. And I'll push them off to the side. That way, they're, at least they're closer as we start going down some of those legs and start removing some of the sensors. All right, so here's where I got to today. I got all of these wires removed from this forward part of the harness. They're all the way back to kind of the middle. And these wires either came from the red or blue PCM connector, or they came from the fuse block connector, or they came from one of these three data connectors. All of those now have got all simplified back to there. Some of the wires from this section here actually went to the PCM connectors, and that's this bundle over here. These are all little two-foot wires. Those are now gone. And finally, we have um, a bunch, uh, several wires that um, we're going to need to keep in this area. And they, these are the ones terminated in this section, but they can't. They're coming from the PCM connectors. You've got mill, which is basically your check engine light. Here's that R33 we're going to use for a second. Um, cooling fan if we decide to do that and tack and all that type of stuff so what I did is once I got I knew what these were I knew the wires were remaining I traced them back to the connector found out what pin they were on looked them up in that chart and was able to label them so again that's where I, I mentioned earlier cut them off of here and we'll, let, we'll figure them out later and, and label them so that's exactly what I did so now we're, we're pretty much organized up in here we got one wire to rerun into here for that other fan and then we're gonna tackle all of that next time. Jack it up.